Good afternoon. It's exciting to be here. I'll share with you uh, my views about animating the inanimate world, benefits of doing so, bottlenecks in the way, and how at Bendable Electronics and Sensing Technologies Group in the University of Glasgow, we are overcoming those bottlenecks. Simple experiment. Consider putting your hands on ice block for a while, and then try to grasp an object nearby. Very likely, you won't be able to do it. Object will slip out of your head, and you can see it happening, yet you cannot do much about it. Because your hands are numb, and when hands are numb, you have lost sensory feelings. This is the state of prosthetics and robotics today. They are not able to feel, because we do not have tools or means that allow them to feel objects. Developing such tools will have huge benefits on a number of areas. For example, amputees will regain lost sensory feelings, robots will be safer to interact with, future driverless cars, they will know how far they are from each other and will be safer. Surgical instruments will allow surgeons to feel tissue from inside the body. And we may also see robotic avatars in future, which allows us to feel remote objects possibly in a hazardous environment, such as nuclear power plant. Today, I will talk about electronic skin in context with robotics and prosthesis, but the concept as such is, applies to all the applications I have just mentioned. As I said, the, the concept as such applies to all, all the applications that I've just mentioned. It's just that different type of sensors are needed. But it's not so easy to develop tactile skin, as was clear from, from, the, from the previous slide, that we need tactile skin. It's not easy because tactile sensing is not like vision, which is centralized. It is distributed throughout the body. You need a different type of sensors to measure range of parameters. For example, real world offers different type of surfaces, such as glossy surface, textured surface. It could be a hard, rocky material. It could be a soft object, a cold, glass of water or hot object. Further, we need simultaneous multiple contacts in order to carry out range of tasks. Consider, for example, robots sitting on the wall. Large parts of body are in contact with the wall. If the task is to jumping off the wall, then feedback from all these body parts are important. In future, if such a robot is to help elderly to carry out tasks such as lifting a heavy bag, then electronic skin should uh, have all these features that I've just mentioned. But the simple version of electronic skin that we have today is touch interface in our smartphones. I call it simple version because it allows us to interpret contact location, but it doesn't give us contact pressure. Further, our touch interfaces are planar. We cannot wear them like wristband, can we? It's difficult. It's difficult because technology do today doesn't allow us to do that. The technology that we have developed to obtain electronics uh, can, can do so on planar surfaces only, whereas real world is curvy. So we need electronic skin that can bend, that can stretch, and that can form, conform to different surfaces. And we are doing that at Bendable Electronics and Sensing Technologies Group. The first method that, that was initiated with colleagues at IIT in Genoa is about using existing technology and developing solutions from existing technology. And this, uh, it is shown here. We try to use existing technology such as off-the-shelf components and putting them on, on flexible surfaces such as flexible printed circuit boards. Off-the-shelf components are usually stiff and planar. They were integrated or soldered on the back side of the skin, as in the center, central image. And on the top side were sensors. And eventually what we got was a conformable uh, tactile skin 
uh, that, that was implemented on large area. But one point we should note also is that 3D surfaces that we come across have random shapes. It could be a combination of different shapes. For example, our fingers, they are a combination of cylindrical and spherical shapes. In order to cover maximum area of, of the surfaces with skin, we need to also be, uh, we need to consider how to place sensors and what shape is to be given to the sensor patch. As an example, we decided to give triangular shape to the patch, and the reason is it allows us to exploit triangulation technique. So consider a spherical substrate. If you take triangular projections and build a 2D map, now, once you have 2D map, you can cover as much as maximum area with the skin and then rebuild the whole thing again. When you rebuild the whole thing, you, what you get is a sphere again with skin, but we're also covering maximum area of the sphere. And that technique we adopted to develop skin for this robot called iCub. Uh, on my right hand is the iCub without skin. In the center, iCub with skin. And on the left, you see iCub with nicely packaged skin. The skin was, was implemented on other robots as well. And it led to improved capability in robotics. So iCub was able to manipulate a variety of objects, including soft objects, as you see here. Now, there are a number of challenges that still remain. But for now, we can say that this skin has, has enabled us to prevent such mishappenings where robots were reported to, to have killed human, skilled worker in a, in a plant. In future, with electronic skin, robotics will be safer, and we will not see such, such incidences, even if there is a human error. As, as far as the technology is concerned, it's quite simple. Touch sensors, it's a, it's a capacity approach that is shown here. You have two parallel plates separated from each other by soft insulator. When you press the top metal plate, the, the two plates, they come closer, and this leads to the change in the current that is flowing through wires. We simply map this change in current with the applied pressure. But I, I, this is just one type of sensors present in, uh, present in skin. Actually, there are a variety of sensors present in the skin. The technology that we have used, the, the existing technology, it's certainly interesting because it allows us to develop new solutions, tactile skin, for example, for large area in this case. But there are bottlenecks here as well, the, 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 and that is seen in terms of bendability. For example, the skin was good enough for large curvatures such as arm. But if the same skin we want to use for, for body parts such as fingers, where higher bendability is needed, as well as more sensors are needed, then, then we hit a bottleneck. And we are working uh, to overcome these challenges. And the idea is to start with the silicon wafer, the planar silicon wafer, which is used to, to obtain electronics in our smartphones. We simply thin it down. And once you thin it down, you get flexible silicon. And you can then think of flexible electronics, which can conform to different surfaces. It is simply like using aluminum bar and thinning, thinning it down to obtain our daily daily use aluminum foil. So in short, we realize electronics on top of planar silicon and thin it down from bottom. And what we get is ultra thin flexible chips. The, the flexible chip from same silicon, which we consider to be non-bendable. They are actually quite highly bendable. And not only in robotics, this type of uh, work has, imp uh, has significant impact uh, in other areas, for example, it could enable in future roll-up displays. We could think in future of uh, TV and, and computers rolling up like carpets, as well as other areas such as healthcare, where conformable electronic skin could be used as our second skin to monitor chronic diseases uh, well uh, early, early in the stages. But for this, we need electronic skin with specific sensors, clinically relevant sensors, that can detect or analyze sweat or possibly tears. Uh, this, this, this particular approach leads to ultra-flexible electronics, but in this small area. As I pointed out earlier, we also need electronics on large area. And this is not so easy today. 
We are advancing this research further, further towards obtaining electronics on large and flexible areas. As shown here, and the technique is simple, we carve out micro nanostructures from the same planar silicon wafer and transfer them to flexible substrates. Now, when we transfer them, we transfer them in such a way that eventually they lead to electronics. And you can repeat this process as long as needed over as long area as, as desired. So this leads to printable electronics over large area and flexible substrates. This approach also allows us to, to overcome one of, the, one of the bottlenecks that has been there uh, for a long time. And that was how to use silicon on flexible substrates and large areas. Because some of the fabrication steps that we need for silicon require temp high temperature as high as 1,000 degrees Celsius. Now, this is a problem because flexible substrate often melts at 100 to 150 degrees Celsius. So we overcame this challenge by carrying out all high temperature steps when these wires are still on wafer, and then we initiated the printing process where rest of the steps were carried out. So in this way, we obtained printable tactile skin. And not only this, we are working towards making electronics very simple. At Bendable Electronics and Sensing Technologies Group, we are looking for solutions as simple as writing with pen and paper. And we have made a modest beginning by sketching various gestures on normal paper with electronic ink, and then using these gestures to wirelessly control robotic hands. This is interesting because printing and, uh, and sketchable electronics will lead to disposable electronics, which is environment friendly as well. As for more than 2 million hand amputees in the world are concerned, this leads to affordable tactile feedback. This is certainly a disruptive technology because it will change the way how electronics will be obtained in the future. Straight from your computers, you can think of printing electronics directly from your computer. And obviously, it will change the way we animate the inanimate. Thank you very much.